Alright, back again Luke here, and today we've got out the old top-loading Famicom, and I figured we could put in this game here. Magic Auto Dorapi. So, let's pop this in and play some of that. Now this is a game that was released around the time that a very famous game was also released, and therefore this game is very, very similar in many, many ways to that famous game that a lot of people know and love. And we'll get into that in just a minute. Let's turn this on here. Let you guys take a look at the intro. And there's our intro. And this is Magical Dorupi. If you notice there at the beginning, the story of this is basically there's an evil emperor who came down to Earth to try and uh, basically take over Earth. But um, unfortunately, none of Earth's weapons, nobody was able to stop uh, these robots that were sent down to Earth to destroy it. And these robots can only be destroyed by magic. So this is our heroine here. Uh, Dodo P, and she's here to save the day. You'll notice it's made by Vic Tokai, and uh, a lot of people out there who are big fans of uh, the company will know exactly which games uh, were made, very famous ones. In the beginning here, it's just gonna get us all set up uh, to get into the game. So he's asking for Dodo P's help. And I'm sure you guys are going to be able to recognize what game this is kind of taken after in just a few seconds. What I'd like you to do is try and look at the face and try and imagine a blue helmet and a blue suit. Can you guess it? Basically, Magical Doropi is a Mega Man uh, clone, and it does a really good job, I think. It's not bad by any means, it's just extremely difficult. Now, with your A button here, you'll jump. With your B button, you'll fire. By pressing the Start button, you have your menu, or your Options menu. Each one of these has a different uh, ab ability to it, but what we're going to do is use the ball here first. This is one of those games, if you've never played it before, it's something that will take trial and error. You'll get used to it the more that you play it, but uh, the first time you go into it, you probably have no idea what to do, so you'll get very confused, frustrated. The way the game works is you can continue about three times. If we press our start button here, you can see there's two lives. You get two, one, and then zero, zero. But once that's over, you start uh, from the beginning of the game, or you start from the beginning of the stage, uh, whatever stage that you're in. As long as you complete the, the, uh, the whole stage, you'll start from the very beginning of that stage. If you've completed half of the stage, you'll start from the very beginning. So 
Maybe there's some interesting things as well. Uh, if we go with our normal shot, we hold down the button. We'll have our power shot here. With the broom, we'll launch this one out. By pressing the fire button, you'll move forward. If you turn around and press the fire button again, you'll move back. Now this is a very interesting thing because you can move up as well. But you have to be careful because as soon as you run into a wall, you wind up losing your uh, broom. And this does come into a lot of hassle here in later on in the game when you're standing over spike pits. Because one hit with the spikes and Dodo P dies. So. There are some places where you can get uh, extra lives or you can get some health fills, uh, things like that. It's really random, but it does happen here. And like I said, the more you play it, the more you get used to it. This is one of those games that I would say is along the lines of kind of uh, Shadow of the Beast in a way. And what I mean by that is when you play it the first time, you'll find yourself just not getting through the first stage at all. Not even getting close. You might even find yourself just getting a few, you know, sections through this stage. But uh, you'll wind up dying and then have to restart, and it's a learning experience. Also, you have to watch out because on the broomstick, as soon as you jump up, you wind up dying. So if you're over spikes, you'll die instantly. And these enemies do continually respawn, so... It's a really interesting game, really tricky. Has a pretty challenging learning curve to it. Let's see. But the more you play, the better you get. And it's one of those games that uh, was also released in the West uh, under a different name of the Creon Conquest. And Creon is uh, K-R-I-O-N and Conquest. Has a very strange looking cart label to it. Uh, kind of looks like a 1980s uh, film. Like a 1980s movie of some sort. Just the artwork does, but... Yeah, it's a, uh, a quite reasonable game for the NES, but on the NES version here, they actually butchered it quite a bit. They've changed uh, a lot of the intro of the story, and here's the end of the round, round one here. They've changed a lot of the intro of the story and changed some of the names around as well, so it's not Dodo P in the Western version, it's got a different name, she's got a different name to it. And the Western release of this one will probably run you, I don't know, maybe $20 or something like that. It's quite reasonable. It'll run you either anywhere from $20 on up to $50, but that's the most it'll cost you. On the other hand, if you're looking to get the Japanese copy, you'll be looking to pay at least about $150 or so just for a loose copy of this one. Maybe about $130 to $150 on up to uh, $300 for a loose copy or a box copy of this game. So it is definitely an expensive one. Let's see. You'll find yourself switching in between here quite a bit. Now this kind of stage here, this is really hard, because the first time you play it, you might just wind up crashing into something, and once you do crash into something, the broom disappears and you die, so... But the game is very Mega Man-esque, and I think it, it's really difficult. <laughs> And you'll find yourself screaming and yelling at this game quite often. Uh, kind of like that. Because it will test your patience here. And it'll also test your ability to uh, outsmart the, the PC. But some of these guys are just really, really quick. And on top of that, they're just really uh, 
really good, they can move around quite easily. Whereas your character's a, a bit immobile. So. One thing about this game, though, is like once you do die um, those three times, it'll start you right at the beginning. So we're not even past the first level yet. Uh, this is the fire one, which kind of creates like a phoenix. I just wasted that. <laughs> it's a kind of one-time shot there. The freeze one is really not used very much. You'll notice that I'm just sticking with these same ones here. It's just because the other ones, they're not used as much. The freeze one is very limited. It only freeze for a limited time and uh, really doesn't cause that much damage. So It's kind of weird that they actually included it. Seeing as it's such a weak weapon. But you will find yourself jumping in between screens a lot. Let's see. Maybe we can drop out our broom here. If you're lucky, you can kind of get past some of these guys, but you just want to be careful where you jump. Let's see. These guys are going to try to attack me. And they will almost always hit you. Which is really unfair. <laughs> if you go too far off screen too, you're looking at... Uh... Ah, that was kind of weird. You're looking at the enemies coming back very quickly as well. Let's see. We need our ball. The shield, as you can see right there, that's just a temporary thing. It Charge it up here. It's the same thing as this one. And it'll protect a little bit against some shots, but it's not exactly the uh, most ideal weapon here. If we do launch out our broom, let's say here, you'll watch when we go up, as soon as it touches something, it disappears, so. As soon as you jump, then it disappears as well, but... Some things that you learn over time with this one... Let's see... I guess we'll stick with it. Nope, that's not gonna work there. This section is very hard in the sense that these guys just keep flying at you, and they'll annihilate you. <laughs> uh, let's see. These guys are the ones I hate the most out of all of these characters. These ones are the worst. Come on. Let's see. Room. Go! There we go, we're through the second round. But even getting through the first two rounds here is extremely hard. <laughs> very, very hard. Nonetheless, just want to show you guys a little bit of a look at uh, Magical Dorope here for the Famicom. It's, uh, ooh, it's a really fun game. It's a really brutal game. Really reminds me a lot of Shadow of the Beast, just because once you go through it the first time and you die enough, you start to think to yourself, like, why do I put myself through the torture of this game? <laughs> But the more you play it, the better you get at it, and uh, that's how it goes, but yeah, that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon, so thanks for watching. Imagine some magical Dorope. Let's see if we can possibly, maybe we can get by this. There. Ah, uh, 
wonder if I would have ducked there if I could have done that. Nope, maybe not. Just trying to get over those flames. Nope, that's not good. Remember, you can fire, but just make sure that you don't turn the wrong direction and start firing. Nah. No! These things are so irritating. I knew that was gonna happen. Ah! I have to start again from the beginning of the stage. That's so what it'll do here is it'll say continue, but as soon as you continue, dun -dun 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 -dun. same conversation. And we're back at the beginning. <laughs> Make a doodle bee. I wish she would have had a broomstick that looked like Rush. That would have been awesome. Alright. Well, we'll just end it here. Yeah, it's good enough. I can't get any further, that's for sure. Thanks again, guys. Take it easy.